Let's switch it back to the political scene here in this country, especially as we approach the presidential election in 2012. And rumors of the demise of President Barack Obama's favorite community organizing group and former employer, by the way, we're talking about ACORN, apparently seems to have been greatly exaggerated. Let's go right now to Matthew Vadim. He is author of Subversion, Inc., how Obama's acorn red shirts are still terrorizing and ripping off American taxpayers. Matthew, good morning, sir. How are you today? Good morning. Thank so, you. What, what I'm reading here is that apparently we have not seen the last of acorn. And, and what is this you're writing about? They could be back in 2012 under a new name? Well, they are back. They're restructuring. They they never really went away. The the main organization filed Chapter 7 bankruptcy on Election Day uh, last year. Uh, but in the in the meantime, uh, its state chapters had broken off and incorporated themselves separately under new names. So, for example, in New York, they're New York Communities for Change, and in California, they're Alliance of Californians for Community Empowerment, and they are operating same people, same offices, same resources, largely, and um, they're still going. They're their um, voter registration, voter mobilization d- division, Project Vote, uh, which is what Obama worked for in 1992 uh, on a voter drive in Illinois, is um, it never changed its name. It's still operating right now unmolested out of Acorn's Washington, D.C. headquarters uh, in the southeast part of the city. And uh, Acorn Housing still operates. All it did was change its name to Affordable Housing Centers for America. So basically, one could argue that Acorn has faked its own death in order to make people uh, not think, not worry about it anymore. Um, Matthew, give us a little bit of background. It was, it was Acorn. Did Acorn start out with pure intentions, or was was there some corruption from the beginning? Acorn never started out with pure intentions. Acorn grew out of the radical. New left in the 1960s, they, they were created to burn the system down, and that has been their intention from the uh, from the outset. When they were started in in 1970, they're the uh, their parent organization was a very destructive group that's not a lot around anymore called the National Welfare Rights Organization. And what it did is it sent all sorts of angry welfare recipients into welfare offices to uh, destroy furniture and intimidate social workers and uh, the thinking was that the, you know they wanted to wage uh, war against the welfare system by getting as many people on it as possible to to collapse the system and acorn has carried on in that dishonorable tradition at least it did for for 40 something years after that it, it, it did the same things but Unlike its parent uh, organization, the Welfare Rights Group, uh, it focused on other group. Uh, it focused on other political issues as well. So, what's it going to take to to bring them down, if you will? Another whistleblower going in undercover, pretending to be a pimp and a prostitute, or uh, to to expose them, or is is somebody going to look into into their dealings on, under any name, under whatever name? Well, there was I, there was I was thinking that there was going to be a congressional investigation of some kind, but. Um, the House Government Reform and uh, uh, Committee Chairman Daryl Issa, Republican of California, uh, certainly seemed to suggest that when prior to the, this past election. But uh, so far, I haven't seen anything happening on that front. Probably, what you would really need is a federal racketeering investigation and possibly charges. But with President Obama um, and and Eric Holder in place. These are both longtime friends of Acorn. Um, I wouldn't hold my breath waiting for that to happen. All but, right. but these people are gangsters. They op- operate across state lines and and they blackmail businesses and governments. It's pretty rough stuff. Yeah. I'd and say. in this book, you find out how Acorn acts in public. The author saying here that anything goes from rude protest to crude intimidation. To even violence, an amazing book called Subversion, Inc., how Obama's acorn red shirts are still terrorizing and ripping off American taxpayers. Matthew Vadim, thank you for being with us today, sir. We appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me on. All right. Still to come on America's Morning News, Jared Lee Loeffner, the shooter in Arizona.